In this video, I'm going to show you guys three different ways that you can install your high pressure fuel pump overdrive kit for a N54 or early N55 equipped with a Continental fuel pump. <laughs> going to be going over those three different ways. I'm actually going to demonstrate a couple of them from the most intensive way of having to replace this uh, all the way up to the easiest way. And so the most difficult way and laborious way would be if you already had your motor out, you for some reason needed to do a timing job on these, which isn't very common, but maybe you're doing it for preventative maintenance drop the subframe, pull the motor, pull the oil pan, do your full timing job, and just simply include this chain and this sprocket um, on your new chain guide assembly for your vacuum pump. So I'm not gonna demonstrate the full teardown, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you wanna order uh, the chain and sprocket, you can order the chain uh, as a continuous chain, that will be an option on the website. Um, option number two is uh, what we'll dive into next, and that's going to be essentially pinning up and holding up the current chain, removing the sprocket, and you're pinning up the chain to make sure this doesn't fall. And then we're going to simply connect the new chain to the old chain and rotate the motor and pull it through so it'll guide down and go around the crank it will hold your tensioner in place and so we won't have any issue with the tensioner breaking and that would probably be the number one thing especially with the age of these motors is making sure that you do not damage the tensioner if you do damage the tensioner uh, you're probably going to end up having to do a timing job to be honest I'll show you that one now. You can see that there's quite a bit of depth here. So if you're nervous about drilling in, you got a good, a good inch before you're gonna hit anything. And if you did hit anything, it would probably be inconsequential because we're gonna be replacing this anyway. You can see this is the guide that normally will end up breaking. That's what we wanna be really careful with. T55. All right, normally um, in a perfect world, you would want to secure the crank back at the flywheel. This is a DCT transmission. I don't have the correct adapter to grab the flywheel and I'm not taking the transmission off. So I'm gonna use a 3 8 extension back here and go through the sprocket. And it is a standard threaded bolt, so it's not reverse reverse threaded so there we go and then this will come right out now before i take this off i am gonna secure the chain because i want to keep proper tension on it and so going either way so what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little pin through this it's sitting on the top of the guide I'll do the same thing on the other side and this will prevent the chain from losing any of its its uh, tension on down underneath
working the sprocket out. Chain off the sprocket. Gotta watch this tensioner over here. Okay, that's free. Let me get this back in here. Beautiful. Okay, on this side over here, this guy is more of just a guide. It's a stationary guide, so I'm not worried about that. What I'm, what typically breaks is this one right here that's spring loaded. So I'm just trying to be conscientious of that. All right, so this is just ensuring that my chain doesn't drop in through and it looks like it's holding that tensioner back in place. So now I have slack to be able to break this chain. All right, there's a lot of different chain breaking tools and master link tools on the internet. This is the one that I happen to be using. I'm probably gonna look for a better one, honestly, but uh, for one-time use, if you're just doing this on your personal car, this is probably a good option. I think it's like 35 bucks. I'm not gonna give you guys a tutorial on how to uh, push out a link um, or install a master link. So you guys will wanna look into that. I'll, I'll show you guys me doing it, but I'm not gonna go into great detail on that, so. Here we go, we've got the chain, and this gives me the clearance I need to be able to get this set. Now what I want to be careful of is on this particular tool, there's a hole on the backside. In fact, I'm going to put a piece of tape. I don't want to push that pin through the chain and have it fall back into the bottom of the oil pan. That would suck. All right, I see the old pin in the base of the tool and the new the dowel that pushed it out is right there. We got both sides of our chain right here. We can go ahead and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be attaching this guy here and running it through and uh, bringing it back out around by turning the motor over. So let me get to that. I'm gonna be using the old pin that I pushed out to temporarily connect the old chain to the new chain to guide it through. So we just push that through. And reconnected the chain, so now I've got this. This car has so little miles on it. I'm gonna mark this. <laughs> Just so that as I pull it through, I don't lose track. Make sure that this chain can uh, 
get pulled down onto that without any kind of hindrance. Get guided in there correctly. So I'm gonna keep some tension on this guy while I turn the motor over. Let's see how this goes. Compression. Ah, there we go. Well, it would have been nice to take the spark plugs out, but. And there she is. There's the mark that we made. So we have just successfully fed a brand new chain through the whole system without removing the oil pan. Friggin' awesome. And the camera was at an awful angle. <laughs> so here we go, here's that. Here's the new chain. Still got my tensioner in place. So now we're gonna remove this link and put in the brand new master link. This is where you are going to now put in your master link. Careful not to drop it. From the back side, it will just push through, so that's makes it nice and easy. Fishing it through worked. So, but there she is. Guides are in place and tensioner's good. Nothing's broken. All right, guys, the third and final option, which I think is the easiest. And this was something I realized while filming the video that just makes a whole hell of a lot of sense. And I'm all about bringing you guys easy and concise solutions. Just like we did before, we're gonna pin or su suspend the chain up, remove the sprocket, and simply remove a section of the old chain and put in the master link to connect that chain for the right length. So right here I have the old chain right next to the new one. So let's just go ahead and count the links. So we're removing this link, one, two, three, four links. So we're gonna remove four links and then you're gonna have two female ends, if you will. And uh, that's where your master link will go. 
And then you can uh, connect this just like we did in the earlier demonstration and you will have a shortened chain. <laughs> video was helpful um hit me up on instagram bimmerhaus performance um check out my website uh, appreciate all the support from you guys all the purchases i'm always here to help hit me up with any questions you have thank you guys